So in this example, we're going to see how to solve a Bernoulli differential equation, which is a first order nonlinear differential equation that's not separable, but through a trick can be turned into a separable differential equation. And the first step is to put it in sort of its standard form, where you just have y prime plus some function of x times y equal to some other function of x times y raised to any real number power. Now, with our example, we have x squared times y prime plus 2y equal to 2 times e to the 1 over x times y to the 1 over 2. Um, it's not in standard form because of the x squared. Right? You don't want anything in front of the y prime. So to put in standard form, we're going to have to divide everything by that x squared. right? And then simplifying, we should have my prime plus all this. Not really much to simplify, right? Um, I guess we can put the y on the side to emphasize that that is p of x there, right? We only uh, set it to a zero after after the, um, in terms of, because I guess you could say f of x was before you divided by x squared, but it isn't. I guess you get your f of x after you divide by this x squared in this case. Right. Well, you can get away with identifying r early on. p and f can change if you have to do anything in step one. So you don't want to identify those until you've removed whatever's in front of y prime. And... So I'm going to put this also you know, off to the side so we can see what we have here for f. And then what is r for this problem? All right, it's not a whole number like the other one. It's a fraction. But it shouldn't really affect any of the formulas or any of the procedure as it's defined. All right, let's solve the homogeneous form. Oh yeah, it's missing the uh, bottom. Thank you, sorry about that. Yes, that's fx. So with the homogeneous form, we are just looking at the left-hand side equal to zero. Of course, this isn't really going to find y, it's going to find y1. And we saw this procedure, it's our first technique of solving differential equations. Uh, before we had formally brought up separable differential equations, that's what we were actually doing though, separation of variables here. So. just going to bring that uh, 2 over x squared y1 to the other side. That gets the x terms on the right. And then to get the y1 terms all on the left, we will divide both sides by y1.
rearranging, we get that separation of variables. We're now ready to integrate and find out what y1 is. The integral on the right is pretty straightforward, right? Because we just use the power rule. So it's x to the negative 2, we would make that x to the negative 3. Sorry, negative 1 and then divide by negative 1. So the exponent of negative 2 goes up to negative 1, and we divide by negative 1, but there's already a negative there, so it's just 2 over x. And much like when we were <coughs> solving for y1 with the linear differential equations, uh, with y1, we just need a particular solution, so we don't need to worry about the constant of integration here. Left-hand side is also familiar. It's just natural log of y1. So, what is y1? All is e to the 2 over x. Which does look like something we had in our function f, right? Hopefully those can combine in a useful way. And we should get the same thing using the shortcut. We're now going to get the other piece, right? Y1 is one factor in the solution. Uh, U is the other. So the solution to the original differential equation is U times the Y1 that we already know. Figure out U and we are done. If we substitute in U times Y1 and its derivative, we will actually get a differential equation that is separable for U. So let's do that. Start with the original differential equation, ah, of course, and use this version, standard form version. And we're going to replace y with u times y1. and replace y prime with the product rule derivative result. Now we can put in what y1 is. We know it's e to the 2 over x, and you could put that in right now. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and make the terms that are 0 cancel out, because That'll avoid having to do as much substituting. And what we're going to do is realize that you can factor off a u off the first term there and the third term there. And if you do that, what's inside parentheses is in fact 0 by definition of y1. 
because it's the homogeneous version, which we solve. You could actually substitute in y1 in its derivative if you don't believe that, but uh, we just showed that that was 0 if you look at the previous step. So that's going to go away, which is nice. We do still have the u prime term, and we do still have the right hand side which also we have to go from y to u1. So, get rid of those terms that add to zero, and you've got this. Now would be a good time to put in what y1 is and simplify this as much as you can, and think of it as a differential equation for you, so we can separate and solve for you. So, put in y1 Whoa. so y1 is e to the 2 over x Yeah. It is. Yeah, we can rewrite it here. The original differential equation. And we're just going from y to uy1. So uy1 goes in for y in both places, and then the derivative which is that sum of terms from the product rule goes in there. How do we get the 2 over x squared, like for the ui1 term? Yeah. I mean, the 2 over x squared was just in the original differential equations. y is now u times y1. All right, simplifying. What can we do? We've got this exponent thing we should probably resolve. So we can, um, we can multiply those exponents. Well, in the case of u, we're just kind of distributing it. So u will be u raised to the 1 half power, right? And then e to the 2 over x times e to the 2 over x raised to the 1 half, you would multiply the 2 over x and the 1 half. And so it would actually just be e to the 1 over x, right? You're multiplying those exponents. Now I've got an e to the 1 over x and an e to the 1 over x. Those will multiply and we would add their exponents. And so 1 over x plus 1 over x will be 2 over x. And you've got an e to the 2 over x here. So that can all go away. You can basically divide both sides by e to the 2 over x, and all those e's will disappear. Does that make sense? Easy. <laughs> no. 
So what is left? There is still a 2 over x squared, right? And there's still a u to the 1 half. So much simpler, it's as simple as it gets, uh, but not separated. So to finish making it uh, separated, and that's this, right? Oh. My directions say separate and then substitute y1. That's something to consider as to what's better. Uh, substituting y1 and then separating or vice versa. It, it'll work out either way. Whichever way makes less mistakes for you. Uh, to separate here, we're just going to divide both sides by u to the 1 half. Okay? Can we just use a negative exponent? No? I tend, you tend to see it written as fraction form, but... I mean, if I'm going to do this integration, I... I'm just going to want the actual exponent anyway. Are you collect, are you, um... Notice that the shortcut does work. R was 1 half, right? And we have u prime over u to the 1 half. Could have jumped right to that. And then f was 2. Wait, what was that? <laughs> f was kind of complicated. F was 2 over x squared times e to the 1 over x. And y1 was e to the 2 over x. So, not obvious that this formula does check out. Um, but r minus 1, in this case, would be negative 1 half. And so if you have an e to the 2 over x raised to the negative 1 half, that's like a 1 over e to the 1 over x, and that cancels with the other e to the 1 over x. So all that's left is the 2 over x squared. Feel free to verify the formula. It will work. Okay, we can now integrate. And it looks like it's just use of the power rule, right? Fractions, now you gotta do the integrals that came with it. <laughs> so, integral of u to the negative one half. So, we would raise the exponent by one, which would make it u to the positive one half. So you could write u to the 1 half or square to u. And then we have to divide by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. On the right hand side, we've got the integral of x to the negative 2. So exponent goes up to negative 1. And then we divide by negative 1. And then that 2 is still there, right? And we do need a c for the second integration when you're finding u. So 
We're good there. All right, let's solve for you. Uh, we're going to divide everything by 2. The 2 over x, x squared dx, that's the uh, f of x, y over 1? Yeah, that's f of x times y to the r minus 1. F of x y1 to the, the r minus 1. Which is not immediately obvious. Uh, you'd have to do a little bit of work. You gotta look at it. That's all. Yeah, but uh, all the e stuff does end up canceling out, and you just get this two over x squared. All right, so we still have u to the one half. We're just dividing by two. Uh, this will now just be negative one over x. All right, because that two is gone, and then c over two is still c. So we'll let that C absorb that too. How do we get rid of an exponent of 1 half? Exponent of 1 half is a square root. Square it, right? So reciprocal exponent would be 2. So u equals this whole thing squared. Let's put this all together. Hold on, once we put y to the one half, uh, we, get, we get e to the one, one over x. So, I mean, the product of, or the, the result of putting, I'll just try to find, I'll follow the algebra. I'm back on step up. I mean, I get your integration. That's just, just getting the, uh, just using the shortcut. So, when we put y1 to the r, oh, r1, r minus 1. Got it. Okay. Right. So yeah, you'd actually be using it to the negative one half. Since y goes to the denominator. Of right. So it's an e to the one over x in the denominator. All right. <laughs> Gracias. All right. So we've got u. We've got y one. Do we have initial condition? I don't think we do. If we don't, we're done. If we do, we have to deal with it. Y one was just e to the two over x. here. There's not really any way to simplify these two. And there is no initial condition, so we just leave it. You know how to find this C. If there's an initial condition, put in X, put in Y, solve for C. Interval validity, what number is no good? Zero, right? Zero. Zero's always biggest disappointment as those numbers go. So do we want from zero to infinity or from zero to negative infinity? Well, depending on the initial condition. So started at one with our initial condition, we'd want the positive numbers. All right, and that about does it.